Today, I would like to discuss the genetic disorder Marfan syndrome. Marfan syndrome affects an individual's connective tissue and causes subsequent issues in the supporting structures of the body. Marfan's is named after a French physician, Antoine Marfan, who first described the disease in a five-year-old patient of his in 1896. Those with Marfan's have several unique physical characteristics. They are usually very tall, have long, thin frames, a high arched palate with crowded teeth, disproportionately long arms and fingers, potentially a protruding or sunken sternum, scoliosis or other spinal deformities, and flat feet. It's important to note that these are all possible physical changes, but every individual may express different phenotypes. In the Ghent criteria, individuals who express four to six of these aforementioned physical characteristics, along with possible aortic issues and retinopathy, are clinically diagnosed with Marfan's. Other common and often more consequential symptoms are aortic dilation, dissection, or possible rupture. Ascending aortic dissection and rupture are the greatest cause for concern in those with Marfan's. Aortic dissection is usually diagnosed with a stress echo, which can identify an enlargement. If an individual's aorta gets to 5 centimeters of dilation or greater, as seen in this CT scan, a graft of the aortic root or a complete replacement of the aortic valve is often recommended to avoid a life-threatening rupture. These heart integrity issues are the main reason that most individuals with Marfan's are advised against participation in sports with high contact or intense physical activity. The prevalence of Marfan's is estimated to be anywhere from 1 in 5,000 to 1 in 20,000 people and appears to have no increased prevalence in any particular gender or ethnicity. Marfan syndrome is an autosomal dominant trait, meaning a parent with Marfan's would have a 50% chance of passing it along to their children. In 75% of the cases of Marfan's, this is how the gene is inherited. However, in 25% of the cases, there is a new mutation in the FBN1 gene that occurs. Marfan syndrome is caused by mutations in the FBN1 gene that leads to haploinsufficiency, which, as we know, is just a big term to simply say there is only one functional copy of the gene. These FBN1 mutations are associated with a broad spectrum of physical conditions, ranging from isolated features of Marfan's, aortic vision issues, stiff skin, etc., to completely separate disorders such as wheel marchesani syndrome that causes those afflicted to be very short in stature. There are over 1,000 identified mutations on the FBN1 gene, and only 10% of them are found to recur in different families with Marfan's. The FBN1 gene is located on the long arm, the Q arm, of chromosome 15 at location 21.1. The majority of patients exhibit a cysteine missense substitution somewhere between exons 26 and 32 at this location. The FBN1 gene codes for making the protein fibrillin-1. This protein is found in the extracellular matrix where it then binds to other proteins to form microfibrils that are about 10 to 12 nanometers in size. These microfibrils are elastic fibers that allow the skin, tendons, and vessels in the body to stretch. They are also the main building blocks of the support structures found in the eyes, heart, and other areas of the body. These microfibrils also store a valuable growth hormone protein known as transforming growth factor beta. For this, we'll just call it TGF-beta. TGF-beta affects the growth, differentiation, and movement of cells. TGF-beta is also responsible for cell destruction and growth regulation. The microfibrils that are normally made by fibrillin-1 usually inactivate TGF-beta by storing it as a regulatory mechanism. However, in someone with Marfan's, when there is less functional microfibrils, there is less stored inactive TGF-beta and more active TGF-beta. This TGF-beta is then responsible for osteoblast activity in early development, which, if you recall from anatomy, would explain the longer bones of the fingers and limbs commonly found in patients with Marfan's. There is no current cure for Marfan's, but most recent research is geared towards blocking this increased TGF-beta concentration. The current treatment for Marfan's at this point is a conglomerate of many specialists that treat the individual symptoms of Marfan's. Every person with Marfan syndrome should have at least a yearly echocardiogram to check the size and function of the aorta and the heart itself. The many noted skeletal issues, such as scoliosis, a sunken chest, and flat feet, 
can also lead to many movement deficiencies. Braces, orthotics, and physical therapy may be tried to correct some of these issues, but may be ineffective. The eyes also require frequent checkups from early childhood due to an increased risk of retinal detachment as well as other possible vision impairments. There are a few medications that are often prescribed to patients, including beta blockers and calcium channel blockers, that decrease the heart rate and blood pressure, which in turn will minimize the load on the ascending aorta. Some recent studies using Losartan, which is meant to lower blood pressure, also showed that it slowed the rate of aortic dilation per year from 3.5 to 0.5 millimeters in some patients. There is also current experiments with TGF-beta neutralizing antibodies that have shown some promise in rat studies. In general, an individual with Marfan can expect to have a normal lifespan, especially if it's diagnosed early so the correct precautions and plan of care can be made. Thanks for watching and listening.